Welcome and thank you for joining us today for Eliminating Patching Agonies, Enhancing Security While Minimizing Business Impacts. My name is Raleigh Gould and I'll be the moderator for today's event. Our featured speakers are Steve Brazen, Research Director at Enterprise Management Associates and Danny Miller, Chief Marketing Officer at Jetpatch. Steve's career at EMA follows 20 plus years of in the trenches experience in IT system support, engineering and management for high technology, telecommunications and financial institutions. Danny has 19 years of technology experience in product and corporate marketing with a strong focus on cybersecurity. Prior to joining Jetpatch, he was the senior director of marketing at Aircom. Before I hand things over to today's featured speakers, I wanted the audience to know that Steve and Danny will be concluding today's presentation by taking your questions. Please feel free to log them anytime by using the Q&A functionality. Also, today's event is being recorded and you will receive a follow-up email from EMA that will include resources from today's event. So I hope you will go ahead and check that email out. And now I'd like to go ahead and turn things over to our first featured speaker, Steve Brazen. Steve? Thank you, Raleigh, and thank you all for joining us today for our discussion on how to responsibly reduce patching challenges while simultaneously enhancing business performance. Patch management is at the heart of enabling both security and workforce productivity, and the focus of today's presentation will be on how to achieve these goals while at the same time minimizing administrative efforts and related costs. First, we'll take a quick look at our agenda for this discussion. We'll see We'll start with a uh, brief overview of the importance of adapting effective patch management processes, followed by a discussion on the primary reasons organizations fail to meet their security, compliance, and SLA goals. This will set the stage for us to reveal the key patch management processes that transform organizations from constantly reacting to patch challenges to proactively preventing them from occurring in the first place. Next, we'll talk about how to implement effective patch management solutions that minimize the burden on IT staff and help to achieve more cost-effective IT deployments. And finally, we'll provide some guidance on how to identify and implement uh, op uh, optimal solutions to achieve these requirements. When most people think of uh, patches, they often specifically think about uh, its role in enabling security, and with good reason, year over year, we are seeing dramatic increases in security uh, attacks and breaches. In fact, in just the last year or so, uh, significant breaches were reported from by uh, some of the most recognizable com uh, companies today across a very wide variety of markets, uh, including Pfizer, Spotify, Kroger, Experian, Geico, Amtrak, T-Mobile, Hobby Lobby, Bose, Volkswagen and Audi, Staples, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube all received major security breaches. And the, the social media management company SocialArc suffered a data leak uh, through an unsecured database that exposed personal information for at least 214 million users of Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Also in March of this year, a security flaw identified in Microsoft Exchange Server uh, software enabled attackers to access the email accounts of at least 30,000 organizations across the US. Now, obviously security breaches are extremely embarrassing for companies to report, but more importantly, they can result in very serious impacts to their business performance. According to our research, 68% of organizations that experienced a security breach saw a large drop off in customers and revenue, and 40% had to pay fines because they failed to meet regulatory compliance. 95% uh, of businesses today are required to meet at least uh, one regulatory compliance mandate, and 88% need to support more than one compliance mandate. Uh, the most significant regulations include strict requirements for achieving data security, including uh, SOX, HIPAA, high tech, uh, PCI, and GDPR. Uh, it's important to note that uh, compliance achievement is not just about not having had any breaches, but principally focuses on certifying that processes are in place to prevent breaches from occurring. And this includes proving, po <laughs> proving proof of a patch compliance. That one was a tongue twister. <laughs> the weakest link in enterprise security uh, is a lack of uh, rapid and effective patch deployments. 
According to our research, at any given time, roughly 80% of IT systems contain known software vulnerabilities that could have been prevented with a patch installation. The exploitation of software code vulnerabilities is the principal method attackers use to bypass enterprise security, propagate malware, and gain access to a business's most sensitive data. Unfortunately, uh, most organizations are not even aware that the vulnerabilities exist in their uh, supported systems. Patch management practices and solutions support the key processes for identifying software vulnerabilities and ensuring the rapid and efficient distribution of critical updates that will prevent exploitation by malicious actors. While achieving security requirements is a primary driver for adopting patch management solutions, it is also uh, important to recognize that patch management helps to drive workforce productivity. No IT system maintains a static state. They are all constantly changing. New applications are being installed and updates are, are constantly being applied to operating systems, drivers, and other uh, software elements. At any given time, uh, that a change occurs, the possibility of a bug or system conflict is introduced. Now, tell me if this sounds familiar. A system is, is updated, say, by, by Microsoft, and suddenly one of your critical applications won't load, load at all, or it's running slow, or it crashes unexpectedly. It's happened to all of us. Distractions such as this can significantly degrade a worker's productivity. Additionally, uh, system performance issues can be extremely frustrating to workers, uh, making it challenging for them to focus on their job tasks. Poor system performance also results in an increased number of complaints and trouble tickets and can even motivate employees to leave the company. While it's impossible to create a completely bug free environment, patch management ensures all the operating system and application components have the most recent code for known issues, minimizing the chances that users will experience performance issues on their devices. Uh, in fact, it's very fair to state that uh, modern business success is dependent on successful management of patches. Uh, Napoleon famously proclaimed an army marches on its stomach. Well, modern businesses march in the performance of their IT, and patch management is fundamental to ensuring the security and performance of IT deployments. According to a survey we conducted among business executives, 78 of organizations regard patch management as critical uh, to their business operations. Uh, when it comes to patching, particularly in regard to security, timing is everything. There are actually two principal methods by which attackers identify and uh, attack vulnerabilities. Hackers may directly disassemble code and look for weaknesses that they can exploit and then launch an attack. Um, after the attack becomes public, the software vendor creates a patch to prevent the uh, further breaches. However, um, all related IT devices are still vulnerable to attack until that patch is actually applied. Now, in the second scenario, the software vendor is actually the one who discovers the vulnerability in their own code, and then they issue a patch. The patch is then promptly reverse engineered by hackers to identify the vulnerability it was designed to repair. And then they launch an attack knowing that the vast majority of devices will not install the patch for a significant amount of time. IT systems are most vulnerable to attack from the moment a software vendor releases a patch to the moment it is in actually installed. The faster this is accomplished, the less likely the system will be breached. On average, it takes two to three months for businesses to fully deploy patches. That's months, not days or weeks, months. For some organizations, patches aren't deployed for years and others never deploy patches at all. With this staggering level of neglect, uh, it should, should come as no surprise that 60% of all security breaches could have been presented, prevented with a simple sec uh, security patch deployment. So why are so many organizations failing to achieve uh, effective patch management, even though they recognize it as important to their business? Well, part of the problem is simply the volume of patches being deployed. Unique patches are, are developed regularly uh, for different platforms, different operating system additions, different device drivers, and different applications. And IT support teams simply cannot keep up. 
It is just not practical for administrators to constantly monitor for new patch releases and then individually install them across the hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of devices that they support. Additionally, manual uh, deployment of patches will never be consistent. Some devices uh, may appropriately receive patches, while others may be missed entirely. Another key uh, challenge is that uh, traditional patching methods are still widely in use and are inherently reactive in nature. Uh, traditional uh, methods do not monitor endpoints to identify vulnerable systems or determine the importance of patch, uh, the individual patch releases uh, by the software vendors. They simply execute patch installations when directed by an administrator or rely on default operating system patching processes. In many cases, patches are not deployed at all until a breach event occurs, which brings uh, attention to that particular vulnerability, which is closing the barn door only after the horses come home, so to speak. Uh, the lack of visibility also leads to what we call the break fix cycle of reactive firefighting. Basically, a uh, problem occurs, such as a patch deployment failure, but the root cause of the failure is never identified. Administrators address the problem manually, but it is doomed to uh, occur again during the next patch deployment because the root cause was never identified and resolved. It's this vicious cycle of breaking and then manually fixing devices that wastes administrator time and reduces end user productivity. Dealing with the uh, systemic patch problems is not only frustrating to IT administrators, it also quickly burns them out. Uh, nobody gets into the IT support field because they want to constantly diagnose patch issues. Let's face it. Admi administrators uh, want to engage in new and exciting IT projects, and they want to be regarded as a valuable asset to the business. Uh, if, if they are not given these uh, opportunities, they'll leave and they'll go somewhere else where their talents are more appreciated. Similarly, workers are increasingly, increasingly becoming impatient with poor IT deployments and patching is often the most disruptive to their productivity. According to an interesting 2020 uh, study conducted by Adobe, 49% of businesses, roughly half of business professionals, are uh, prepared to leave their current job if they are unhappy or frustrated with the technology that they uh, use at work. So clearly, reliable IT solutions are essential to attracting and retaining talent these days. Unfortunately, many organizations still use antiquated patch management methods because they are resistant to introducing improvements. Uh, they are frequently concerned that uh, better solutions will be too costly or too difficult uh, to manage or will be disruptive to uh, business performance during their rollout. Often uh, businesses prioritize other security and IT management improvements higher and never really get around to patch management. In fact, 54% of organizations that we surveyed reported that they use little or no automation at all in support of patching processes, which is just staggering. In most cases, businesses are just relying on operating system tools such as Windows Update or Mac OS Patch Tool to install patches without any control over what and when patches are being deployed and with no way of monitoring if patches were ever successfully installed. The fact is that by introducing patch management processes that are proactive, Organizations significantly reduce administrative efforts and operational costs while boosting IT security and reliability. With a proactive approach, holistic visibility is introduced to rapidly identify vulnerabilities and automate patch deployments before a hacker has the opportunity to attack. Also, the root cause of patch failures and proactive uh, potential problems are identified so uh, issues may be resolved once and then never repeated again. A proactive approach to patch management recognizes that patching is not a siloed process, but is an integral component to your organization's overall security and IT management strategy. Patch management uh, has to be strategic and a governed process. Now, this means uh, some intelligence has to be introduced to make decisions on patch distributions. Patching must be a continuous process rather than periodic or intermittent. 
Uh, all patch deployments should be tested to ensure there are no bugs or compatibility issues. And patches should be verified to ensure that they are at the most recent additions. A determination should also be made on the urgency of each patch distribution. Not all patches have equal importance. Um, more critical patches, such as those addressing extreme security vulnerabilities, should be deployed rapidly, while lower priority patches can be deployed at a time that's more convenient to the users. As I mentioned, um, establishing holistic visibility on patch status is uh, foundational to uh, being proactive. You, you simply cannot secure and support what you don't know about. All supported systems and applications should continuously be monitored to identify current patch levels and ensure that they are the most recent versions. Organizations should monitor for the release of new patch distributions from software vendors so that they can be deployed as expediently as possible or as appropriate. It is also important to collect ancillary uh, information that may uh, impact patch deployment. It's likely much of this information is actually already being collected by management platforms that you're already using. Now, for example, uh, if you have a SIM platform, it may identify a particular system as being at high risk, indicating that security patches should be deployed to it more urgently. Um, another example would be a systems management platform that provides information to determine if a device has uh, prerequisite configurations or uh, installed software uh, to support a patch distribution. Similarly, uh, the patch management system uh, should be able to communicate patch status information to other management systems to support their functions. Uh, federating, federating data collection in this way is, is also more efficient so you don't have to be uh, bogged down systems by unnecessarily monitoring the same conditions and using multiple tools. It also creates a consistent view of the entire IT ecosystem. Once you've collected all this rich patch status information, you, you want to be able to apply some intelligence to it to enable strategic decision making. Uh, popular intelligence technologies, including uh, analytics, machine learning, and language processing, um, these uh, can be used to rapidly evaluate patches and system states to make recommendations on how they should, on how patches should be deployed, such as by prioritizing pa prioritizing patches based on the level of risk uh, posed by the the targeted vulnerability. Intelligence technologies can also be used to identify the root cause of failures and provide guidance to administrators on how to resolve those problems, uh, improving both time to remediation and overall time of uh, uptime of the supported systems. One of the more interesting aspects of using ML or analytics is to model planned patch deployments to predictively identify if there will be any issues before the patch is even deployed. Uh, and intelligence technologies are also critical for helping to meet uh, SLAs and regulatory compliance. By establishing intelligence-based performance metrics, organizations can continuously monitor conditions across their IT environments to ensure business requirements are being met. No more waiting until quarterly audits are performed. Non-compliant systems can be detected and remediated in real time. And using this method, Proof of compliance is extremely uh, simple to attain and uh, report on when when it's required. Uh, I, I I think that um, you can see uh, where this discussion is really going. Holistic visibility coupled with intelligent decision making eliminates much of the grunt work from day to day patch management and proactive processes end that break fix cycle of reactive firefighting. So administrators only have to address issues that absolutely require their attention. When administrators don't have to spend large chunks of their time monitoring patch deployments, configuring patch distributions, investigating patch problems, and reporting on patch status, they are freed up to manage and improve business critical systems or to introduce new business focused services that drive increased business performance and profitability. And IT operational costs are tied directly to administrator efficiency. As you reduce the number of mundane tasks administrators uh, must perform, you increase the value of each support member to the business. Additionally, frustration levels 
are also significantly reduced among both administrators and end users, helping your organization to retain, retain key knowledge and talent. Uh, perhaps nowhere are patch management efficiencies more uh, e uh, effectively achieved than with the use of orchestration to enable patch distributions. Our research shows that the use of automation to centrally deploy, deploy patches, now just that one change alone, just the introduction of automation, reduces the total time administrators spend on patch management by 50% on average. And that's just the beginning. Additional time savings can also be achieved by automating tasks around the actual patch deployment. For instance, automating checks uh, can be initiated to uh, ensure any requirements or prerequisites are uh, configured on the target sy systems prior to patch installations, such as by checking uh, for available disk space or uh, reliably shutting down processes that could be affected by the update. Multiple patch uh, deliveries can also be ordered to address any dependencies and post deployment automation uh, pr processes uh, can be initiated to check or test their success or to turn back on processes uh, to turn back on the processes that may have been previously disabled. So in this way, patch deployments are managed from end to end from initial patch discovery through final resolution with little or no administrator interaction. Orchestration can even manage complex patch deployments, such as those that require multiple reboot steps or uh, multi-system interactions. Even the communication of patch deployments can be part of an orchestration uh, workflow, informing users when a patch is going to be deployed on their workstation and exactly how long it's expected to take. Perhaps nowhere are patch management efficiencies more effectively achieved than with the use of um, uh, uh, orchestration, uh, but in terms of uh, user experience, scheduling is extremely important. Organizations can avoid impacting users at all by confining patch deployments to low use times, such as evenings or weekends. Urgent patch distributions may need to be imposed on users more rapidly, while low risk patches may be deferred until uh, a more convenient time. It is also advantageous uh, when uh, end users are able to provide some input into the patch distribution timeline, uh, particularly uh, with the deployment of uh, low priority patches. Uh, while you don't want to allow them to defer patches forever, allowing end users to select a convenient time period will help avoid uh, their work disruptions while giving them a sense of control over the processes, which helps diffuse any uh, frustrations or anxieties. After deployment processes are completed, a proactive patch management solution will review status logs and alerts to determine if any errors were detected during the installation. Also, tests should perform, be performed on the uh, target system uh, or the application to identify any bugs or compatibility issues with the, with the patch. Uh, the ITIL service transition set of best practices calls this change validation, but it's better known as closing the loop because the identification of patch deployment processes will likely initiate additional re remediation steps. Uh, most notably, uh, unsuccessful patch deployments uh, can be automatically rolled back. So to provide uh, more time to uh, intelligently analyze and resolve the root cause of the problem without uh, unnecessarily inconveniencing the end user. Uh, naturally, the uh, patch will be uh, uh, rolled out again once the re root issue has been remediated, uh, which success, uh, uh, successfully closes that loop. Now, as you've seen, the deployment of strategic and proactive patch management uh, solutions involves the adoption of both processes and technologies working hand in hand. A strategy without automation will get you nowhere and vice versa. Uh, I've talked a lot about the key processes to employ. Now I want to sp uh, focus specifically on the technologies essential to support them. A patch management platform should be unified, enabling centralized management for all patch distributions across all systems and applications managed by your business. It should be able to automate uh, the discovery uh, of both known and unknown endpoints on your network to ensure that every device is supported and protected. It should facilitate holistic visibility, continuously collecting information on endpoint patch status 
and patch out availability and presenting that information in easily digestible dashboards and reports. And it should enable the end to end orchestration of patch deployments with dynamic process automation and scheduling. The immediate uh, choice you will have to make while evaluating solution is whether to adopt an on premises solution or a cloud hosted solution. Um, both, uh, uh, both are very important to your organization and they both certainly have uh, their merits. Uh, on premises solutions are often more customizable and are easy to integrate with third party solutions. Whereas cloud hosted platforms uh, incur no infrastructure costs are fully managed easy to deploy and uh, are eminently scalable. Another option is to adopt a hybrid approach where some uh, co components of the so uh, solution are supported in the cloud and others are on premise. For instance, a patch management console um, may be hosted in the cloud, but the individual patch packages may be stored on the on premises server. A big part of this uh, decision will depend on whether your where your organization currently is in its cloud journey. Many businesses are well into their process of transitioning to cloud hosted management services, while others are apprehensive about even wading into those waters. My best recommendation, particularly if you are leaning towards an on premises solution, is to adopt a platform that can uh, be hosted in both environments. This will give you the option to make that transition with uh, little pain if you decide to, uh, to do so at a later date. Uh, the level of integration. Uh, uh, offered by a patch management solution should also be a key consideration uh, when evaluating platforms. Now, as I said earlier, you should never think of patching as a standalone process. It is an integral component of both security management and systems management. This may take a bit of a shift of your perspective to wrap your head around, but it is important to see IT management processes as interconnected. Uh, the extent of integration supported by a patch management platform will determine its uh, ability to attain holistic visibility and process consistency across management disciplines. For example, um, uh, to um, uh, both, um, for example, both security and systems management platforms often include processes for executing patch deployments themselves. Now, through integration points. Deployments can be initiated by the third party platform, but instead be executed directly by a more complete patch management system. In the same way, patching processes can be part of a unified management workflow that orchestrates maintenance or remediation tasks across security systems and patching solutions. So to sum it all up, modern uh, organizations are under a lot of pressure to enhance security and enable more productive users, uh, while at the same time minimizing administrator, uh, administrative efforts and costs. To many organizations, this sounds like they're being asked to have their cake and eat it too. However, it's quite possible to achieve all of those requirements at the same time by adopting patch management processes and solutions that enable broad visibility intelligent analysis and end to end patch orchestration. These key capabilities transform error prone reactive environments into proactive and predictive patch services. Additionally, unified patch management solutions become an integral component of the much broader IT management and security ecosystem, maximizing the value of all IT investments. Now, admittedly, uh, much of what I discussed is conceptual. So, to give you a more concrete idea of what an effective unified patch management platform looks like, I've invited uh, Danny Miller from Jetpatch to, to uh, join us today. Um, uh, Danny, uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit uh, about Jetpatch? Thank you very much for being here. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Jetpatch and uh, how it helps to meet many of the key requirements I just outlined? <laughs> Sure. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, glad to be here today and introduce the uh, Jet Patch. Um, predict, patch, and perform. Please remember these words. I will refer to them throughout my uh, uh, presentation. So let's talk about uh, uh, what are going to use the time today. So I'd like to share with you some insights that we managed to gain while working with our uh, customers. Uh, while uh, around patching and introduced to you not only to the patch management platform, but also to the philosophy that drove us to create our patch innovation. So after everything we heard from you, Steve, uh, I'd like to think that it's clear that 
you people on the call, you must embrace patch automation as one of your next project, and you have to bump it up in your priority list ASAP. Why is that? Really because you can accomplish so much more with less, with less time and less effort. Yeah, and I know and it sounds too good to be true, but I want to take you a closer look and see how it's actually being done. So I'd like to start by sharing with you some, some data points that you are unlikely to find anywhere else. This is data that we have seen in, in our system and based on our customer data. And what's so unique about this data is this patch agony that Steve has talked about is not a given. You actually have the power to change it if you only knew what is the root cause. So simple things like credential change or a virtual machine that was part of the weekend can cause organization to fail, but they're still hard to discover, let alone other things you know, that are being calculated during runtime or being discovered while looking at correlation. So the implication is either the manual patching that Steve talked about or rescheduling those endpoints for a next patching cycle, leaving you obviously unprotected. So does it sound familiar? Do you feel that you had that patching cycle that was 100% complete? If you did, I, I applaud you. By the end of the day, we know it's clearly the, the exception to the rule, right? So let's explore further this concept of patch-related data and what we would like to call as insights. So most organizations are using vulnerability scanner to you know, assess the status of the environment, the missing patches, and define the prioritization for those needed patches, right? So this is the level of insight that you usually have. Why, why is that? Because organizations, and, and you know it from experience, you just cannot cope with that sheer volume of patches, right? And you need to rely on those vulnerability scanner to define the remediation strategy. The problem is that such scanning is only happening once in a while, and it's only a recommendation that you still need to take a decision what to remediate. So priority is super important, but it's only one aspect, which is essentially a static snapshot of a current situation. What, with the kind of insights that I'm sharing here with you today, you have the opportunity to actually act based on dynamic data that is being generated in real time from your system while correlating it with the vulnerability scanner data you're using. So kind of the one plus one equals three. So you can really up your game and make some informed decision about where to focus your efforts and then remediate in a click. Now, there is a difference also by the uh, by who is impacted by this patching activity? You would think that, yeah, it's simply the IT operation people, the patching team, they are responsible. But actually, the impact of patching is far greater. Different functions within the organization have different needs that must be addressed. And, you know, all of you here today, uh, you are represent those different stakeholders. So all of you have something to gain by having this data handy and by being able to take an informed decision based on your, your respective domain. So, for example, uh, you know, if you are at the top of the hierarchy and looking for some holistic information about the compliance of your entire organization, you are dependent on reliable patching information. Would you agree? So, we had multiple discussions with prospects and customers and analysts, just like uh, we, had, we had spoken with Steve. And it's clear that although organizations invest a lot of money to improve their IT and security operation, and I'm, I'm sure you agree with it, most of you are still residing at the lower level of the maturity curve, right? Very far from the proactive or the even the anticipatory stages that reflect that automation that we talked about, that Steve mentioned, that can really handle those security challenges effectively. So we realized that that maturity level, this is the reality in the field, and this, is ref this reflected on how we at JetPatch designed our patch solution. We wanted to make sure that we address not only the multiple stakeholder, but also what it means for them, right? So the whole approach to, to patching, we realized my change. So we got the data, right? We talked about the data. We understand who are the stakeholders. So I think we're ready for to move forward, right? The problem is that understanding is only one thing, but where to invest the effort is another thing. So if you look at the patching execution and you look 
within your organization, almost all investments are focused on the right hand side of that curve around the deployment, how to automate, how to generate reports, what are the stats, what do you need to fix, what do we do with the failures, etc. But given everything we talked about so far, it is very clear that this approach is not yielding those expected results. This is why we decided to shift left and focus on the root cause. And exactly like Steve mentioned, we need to understand the root cause and we now have the data to do that. Which brings me to actually introduce the Jetpatch platform. I'm excited to share with you how we bring that philosophy into a real time pattern. Predict, patch, and perform. I mentioned it before, and now let's dive into some of those details. So the Jetpatch platform is a modern patch remediation solution. We collect data from multiple resources and processes it in our data lake. We then use machine learning to predict the success of the upcoming patch cycle, solve any potential issues and dramatically increase the patch success rate. And we do all that using the proactive governed automated process, which provide visibility and reporting across the environment. And finally, we make sure that the business is intact and that post patching, there is no degradation to the application performance. So let's look how we collect and generate some of this data. So starting with the patches, we proactively discover the assets in the environment and we constantly search for their missing patches. This information is then fed into our data lake so we can assess risk and compliance while planning our automation. No need for any manual work to look for different patches or worry every time you add a new endpoint to the mix. Let's talk about the endpoint itself. Using endpoint readiness automation, we're able to collect in real time information about the status of the machine and whether they are ready for patching. So it's fairly easy, I think you'll agree with me, to deal with a network connectivity, a memory issue, or a configuration problem while prepping for a patching cycle. But it is costly and disrupting to discover it during an active patch cycle over the weekend and have the endpoints fail to patch as a result. So all that information, as you can see in front of you, is presented in a clear and functional jet dashboard that really helps you focus on the errors that matter the most. And Steve mentioned the ecosystem. And we really think ecosystem is very important here. So we gather information from relevant IT environment, as you can see, or on the, on the left hand side and the bottom, whether it's the vulnerability scanner, the repository, the application. Patching is not an isolated activity. It's part of an organization ecosystem and as such, it needs to interact with the relevant IT and security products. This is how we're able to monitor what's required and plan ahead. So remember I said predict, patch, and perform. Let's drill down a little further and see how this magic is actually done. So let's talk about predict. Our predictive analytics model takes into account a lot of information. And I share with you those data points that we collect. But essentially, its purpose is to ensure that you could surface future problems, cyber hygiene, before they occur and flag them so you could fix them prior when the patching actually occurs. This is how we shift left. Right, so this outcome indicates which endpoints require attention, what kind of problems occur, and how to fix them. So you can think about it actually as kind of a patch simulation. So this is this proactive element that is missing from most organization and also from most of the tool. This real-time simulation really becomes a strong tool in making your patching success successful. So we've done with the predict. Now let's talk about the patch. We got the prediction in place. We're prepared. We're in a much better shape, you have to admit, right? So we're ready to execute. Now let's patch. Well, not so fast. We know that there are many steps that are taken before and after a patch. Applying that just the patch itself, it's actually the easiest part of the process. But if you need to take a server out of a load balancer, maybe run a backup, maybe stop a service, then apply the patch, the right patch, turn on the service, maybe do a reboot, and then go back to the load balancer, well, you will have to agree with me that no wonder that so many patches are just left behind. Luckily, 
at Jetpatch, we offer a workflow engine where you can easily execute all those steps, including adding automated tasks as needed, either from our own library, or you can bring your own into those sequences. So ensuring that every patch is executed the right way while using intelligence to combine those different processes. So we're looking holistically at on the all of the system as what needs to be achieved. We'd like to consider this part as the heavy lifting, right? The patching from A to Z. And obviously all the scheduling is pre-planned and you'll be and it will be executed automatically only within the defined maintenance window. Now let's talk about the performance. So the patch will be executing at a defined time using as defined in the automation scheduler. But part of the component, the performance component, is really to ensure process governance and auditing. As part of this ecosystem approach that Steve mentioned and I, and I showed you how we look at, Jetpatch also opened automatically a change request ticket within the ITSM, capturing all of the data, ensuring that the application owner or whoever is your relevant party within your organization gets to approve that patch. So once this patch process is complete, we now perform a set of automatic user type testing of the application, ensuring there is no performance degradation. Because sometimes we know these things are happening as a result of the patch, and as we mentioned, this is one of the fears that actually causing people not to patch. So this testing only takes several hours instead of the days or the weeks in the lab. It's fully automatic and it ensures faster time to remediation with full transparency. So, so far I talked about the platform. Now let me connect with you the dots. So let's talk about a customer. This is a government agency in North America with a very complex environment of close to 4,000 servers with a mix of Lin Windows, Linux, and even Unix, as well as multiple locations. Before using Jetpatch, this organization needed around four months to complete the full patching cycle. Remember, uh, Steve talked about between two to three and sometimes never. So four months is actually you know, quite the industry average, and it's far from being ideal, as you can imagine. And you know, each of you knows where you stand in terms of that. But due to the compliance regulation, this customer was really needed to significantly reduce the time in order to avoid federal penalties. So following the deployment of Jetpatch, the time needed to prep for each cycle now reduced by 75%, 75%, which enabled the organization to really shift resources to other pressing IT tasks, as Steve mentioned, while keeping a much smaller group dedicated to the patching. Remember the less was more that I started with, and I said, you know, probably I'm, 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 it just doesn't make sense. Well, here it is: less precious downtime, less manual efforts, more, more shorter time to remediation, and meeting the compliance. Needless to say, this customer recently just renewed their licenses for another three years. So I'd like to summarize everything I covered. Data-driven decisions are key to any mortal remediation and to IT in general. Jetpatch collects and analyzes a lot of data to help you take proactive and informed decisions along the value chain. This is the predict part. Patching has been around for two decades, but it doesn't mean that you have to settle with a 20-year-old technology. Jetpatch uses machine learning and automation and other invest technology, making sure that patching does not fall behind other IT modern processes. This is how we view patching. By using process automation, ecosystem integration, government control, and automatic testing, we're able to deliver to you operational excellence and best practices. And this is what we consider the perform part. Finally, this more with less is a business reality, right? We all know it. All organizations are facing it. There is never enough people and enough budget to accomplish everything planned. Jetpatch changes that equation and lets you excel in your patching, improve security and compliance while requiring much less effort and resources. I think you all agree with me, maybe it's time to consider a modern patch automation solution. Thank you. Back to you. Great, thank you for that. Great information, Steve and Danny. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the Q&A. 
Uh, before we do, I wanted to invite everyone to learn more about Jetpatch. You can visit their website. Um, you're also invited to send Danny an email if you have any questions or inquiries.